Morning. Good morning. Back for another episode of Expandable. Thanks for joining us. Today, we want to get into this topic of knowing your business. All right. Right. I think a lot of um, business owners who are trying to grow, they're trying to expand, um, can trip on the in the process of doing that and, and mess things up because they they have maybe had some success and they think, well, we we'll just keep going, doing what we're doing. Sometimes it's good to take a step back and look at do we do we really understand what it is that we're doing and who we're doing it for and how this all fits together? And sometimes it can be a simple exercise. Sometimes it, you might have to, you know, come to this because you are at a point, a negative point where something has well, happened. I mean, some you have an idea and then the market is showing you something different. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Not to say your idea wasn't better, but the market is different, so you may have to That's calibrate it. and change. Yeah. Yeah. So. I want to kind of do a flyover here for this topic and I have four points All that we want right, to take it through. Them. And they're kind of um, almost in this order of priority. I would, the way I would recommend. All right. First or least? First. Okay. Yeah. So the first is knowing what your targets or your audience needs. I think that is primo because that's everything built around that. Right. So if you know what your target audience or target accounts actually need, the things that you're solving for, then that's going to dictate what you offer and how you offer it. That, you know, that seems to be like, you know, since I'm in banking, when I'm being sold by vendors, a lot of times it always comes, well, I was in your shoes prior and these were the mm-hmm. issues I was having as a banker. Mm-hmm. So that's the first come the priority. The people that seem to do that know the market best, they were, they're trying to fill a need that they didn't have. So now they're yeah. jumping sides. Yeah. Because they were frustrated, so right. but not always that's the case. Yeah, and this gets into kind of some marketing um, back channels of knowing your customer, you know, understanding their needs, um, diving in, talking to current ideal customers, and asking them, you know, what is the, what are the things that you're dealing with that maybe we don't know about, and yeah. having these maybe you know personal back channel conversations. How so much you can would learn. this service or product? affect you yeah. in business in a positive, negative. Yeah. And maybe even taking it off of what you're currently doing for them and just saying, Hey, tell me about your role. Like, what are your troubles? Like what's going on in your world that you wish that you could solve and not necessarily that you will solve it or you could, but it gives you context to why they are buying your service. Yeah. All right. So that's a good place to start. Second, secondly, I would say, um, know what it is because that's going to determine what it is that you're delivering. Maybe you already are delivering something and it's a good product market fit, but that's really what we're talking about. It's product market fit. Know what it is that you're, you're offering, what it is that you're delivering and how you can deliver it successfully. So a lot of that's going to come from these conversations with ideal clients, Mm -hmm. right? Um, If you get in there and do the hard work of understanding what it is that they actually need uh, and some of it can be nuanced. um, It's going to change most likely, because most people think they know their customer and they don't. Well, everybody <laughs> has something that they wish they didn't have to do anymore. Yes. You know, in yes. their business or as a consumer, like, right. you know, I mean, you know, I mean, as advent of Amazon now, I can get in the next day. So it's, That's do right. I really need it today or can I wait two days? Yeah. You know, yep. and then you feel like you're saving the planet when you, you tell them to put it all in the same box, get it on Friday. Oh yeah. 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 Like, that, oh, that's yeah. saving everything right there. I, I did such a great job. You, you know? So, so that's the second thing I would say is just know what is your offering and what, you know, how can you deliver that successfully? The third thing is know the path that you're building for your team to support all of that. Okay. Okay. So your team is going to be, super important across all these things. But I think team really comes third because you have to know your buyer. You have to know how to interact and engage with your buyer. Know um, the packaging of how you're delivering, right? All those things have to be kind of set so that your team can then come in around that and deliver successfully. Well, I think too, as you've narrowed it down more, you'll get better input and insight Mm -hmm. from your team. Yes. Instead of how to open it. And and then I'm kind of doing that at the same time with my team. I'm producing the risk assessment and the model first instead of the idea, getting that Mm -hmm. and then presenting to them. So, okay, now it's more focused and they critiqued. And that's right. 
you know, because let's face it, your team typically a lot of times are specialized in fields that mm-hmm. you're not specialized in. That's you right. know the overall, but they're the specialists. Yeah. So provided them the plan. Here's our customer. Here's the products. Okay, now what are your thoughts? Yeah, and I would say right now you're going through something um, at the bank yeah. that is very much in line with this model where... Well, I know, mean, today I'm actually I'm meeting uh, a customer about their needs mm-hmm. and having a conversation over lunch today uh, about kind of a model we're developing and how it could benefit them and whatnot right. and what, what can take off their plate because and what they want to retain. Something has changed in their world Yeah, that's big. And so you're like, well, we're doing business with them. We need to, you know, always be constantly leading them as a, as a customer. We want to be, you know, kind of take care of them. So you meet with them and say, well, what has changed? How has it changed you? You know, your business. Yeah. How, do, how can, what are we currently doing? How can we, you know, be a positive impact in that? And, and what's funny, and when I'm talking to my customers, you do get a wide range of, I've got some that say, <laughs> Where I've been through this before. I've been in this industry 30 years. They tried to do this in the 90s. I love those things. Yeah. Tried to do it in the 90s and I succeeded. Oh, well, others, you know, they'll go away and my business will grow because others will go out of business. And that was that strength mindset of this yeah. guy. Like, well, whatever, I, yeah. I will still be here. I'm going to be that rock and I'm going to continue right. on. Now, clearly he's from a standpoint that he probably has, I, I would assume, good assets, good foundation. So mm-hmm. if his business was impacted, he can weather that storm. That's a fantastic place to get into it. Yeah. Now you got customer. others that are saying, okay, I was in this business. Now my revenue is going to decline X. If it declines that, now it's opportunity cost. Do I need to say this to a fish or cut bait? Mm-hmm. And so you've got those customers that they're going to wait a month or two to see the ramifications. Yeah, And then you've got others that are, they're just panicky. They, they have no idea what to do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you want more of the, of the former. Uh, yeah. You want to see the ones that you want those customers. What are your like, ideas? Let's hey, we're moving forward. Yeah. Let's implement, let's put in pl- practice. We yeah. still know there's an, a need out there. We know there's a need. The need has not gone away. Nothing has changed. Just an outsider that has no clue on our industry mm-hmm. made up a statute and they have no idea of the unintended consequences. Right. No clue, but and that happens daily. And I don't care just what the, industry yeah. you're in. You could be in pizza delivery systems and a state statute right. comes about on um, how to knock on a dwelling or something. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's so many obscure things that happen in yeah. life. And they ebb and flow, you know, yeah. and you're in the first inning of this game, you know, and you got to recognize where are you in the continuum of each of the problems you're dealing with in your business. Mm-hmm. And so... And another have um, a customer. Um, we finance their um, open and re- open up a restaurant, breakfast, lunch place, yeah. and um, first week open. Uh, I, I went there. They had a little soft opening for friends and family. You know, thank you for supporting us and training the staff. And then I went a week later, and, and as I was talking to him, you know, their idea they they were thinking it was going to be a huge breakfast focus, and they were surprised about the demand for lunch. Huh. So they're like. Okay. Yeah. They I mean, that's adapt. a good surprise. Adapt, so the, yeah. they're adapting and, you know, what, what I love about them is, you know, they've got the core of what, you know, good quality food that they wouldn't produce, but you know, how that's arranged in the demand and market. Yeah. They're sitting there and analyzing it and looking at it. That's right. Yeah. They're talking, well, they're talking to their customers too. Yes. Right. They're doing exactly what we're talking about here. They're, they're talking to the customer, seeing, oh, well, you like this a little less. You like this a little more. We're already planning on being open for lunch. Mm-hmm. So we're going to just shift our menu a little bit. And see what you're like. The owner yeah. was sitting over there with their laptop, mm-hmm. watching the transactions and the flows, letting the staff managing go through there. Inconspicuous. There was no big. That is just the best thing. They were yeah. sitting in there and watching. Yeah. And that's great, too, to hear about a restaurant yeah. because – you know, historically, the second restaurant usually fails because the owner still got, the, you know, bottlenecked in the first one and they get so overzealous to start the second one and they will just sort of throw it, you know, throw this thing together and then they'll be back over here, you know, flipping pies or whatever they're doing. Yeah. And, and then they, they're not do, sitting and being intentional with their customers. Yeah. And everything is different. You can be, you know, it's amazing. You can be a half a mile away from one location mm-hmm. and have a total different, unique circumstances. Yes. So yes. it's like having two kids. Well, I mean, the first one, oh, the second one, I mean, you, they're different personalities are different people. Yeah. 
And so it's good that they're there, you know, doing what we're saying, you know, they're, they're getting to know the customer. They could easily have, I mean, this is a perfect example to what we're saying because they could have easily said, well, we have this one first. This location. is the way I like it. And I like it positioned yeah. this way with this particular it, well, well, and we format. have customers that we know personally, and we know what they like over here. They're probably just going to come over here and do the same thing. And they're going to, they're going to support us over here too. Cause they, we know them in it. And that's, they're not, they're not resting on their laurels. They're not saying we know they're saying we have hypothesis and we're going to sit here and try to figure out what the real answer is, which is cool. Mm-hmm. That's good. I mean, that's, that's, that shows well, uh, to me. I mean, the, those, and that's the things that is very hard in my world of when you have people and you're underwriting on approval, you know, that was my expectation mm-hmm. of them to begin with anyways. And, and it was so cool to see that because now that you've got customers like that, mm-hmm. they're sitting there being aware they're going to make it. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Uh, so b- before we get to the last one here, recapping, know, know your audience. This is great examples of mm-hmm. that. Um, know what you're delivering and how you can deliver it su- successfully and start building your team around those two things. So lastly, it's about efficiencies. Okay. Okay. So efficiencies, margins, cash flow. These I'm saying are last because most businesses want to put them first because they want to make money. Well, if you put your customer first and you put your team essentially second, but focused on the customer. Yeah. And these are building systems that are efficient around those things. Um, that's, I think, the best formula. Because yeah. now you're like, okay, I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Maybe we're, we're over margin a little bit um, here or there. You know, we could, we could make some changes. Mm-hmm. But you've really over invested in the customer and the team. Then you can come behind it and say, how do we make this, you know, systematized? where things flow easier, help the team, help the customer. You know, it's not just all about margins yeah. and, and yeah. And, and it's had, like efficiencies come after success. A lot of times mm-hmm. like, okay. Cause now we know what, what they need and what we're, how, what we're delivering. Let's make it better. Yeah. How, how, how do we get the cost down? How do we speed it? We keep quality up. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, hopefully this is helpful. You know, um, Great. yeah, we'd love to hear from everybody, you know, yeah. what, what topics, uh, you know, go over and talk about. That's right. All right, on to the next one.